Hello YouTube, we are back for the second installment of Captain Ario. Now, what I did was I removed all the pieces of interior cover that were flaked all around. And we are here with the cover, or at least the pieces of the cover, that we have to deal with. So I'm gonna try to do with this upload a step-by-step -step process where I do everything on camera. My mistakes, color loss, flaking pieces. We're gonna try to be transparent. And last upload, I discussed what I wanted to do with the actual cover. And I said that probably a lot of dry cleaning was not going to be done. But you know what? What I wanna do is I wanna use a cotton round against what I said last time. And I just wanna run it across the cover and I wanna see how it turns out because right now, in my opinion, the cover is in actually pretty good shape. It is not dirty, there's not a lot of stains, but we just wanna wipe off gently because the cover is very fragile. I just wanna gently take the cotton round and I'm, I wanna always go outwards so we don't rip the cover by mistake. Then I'm gonna look at it and I don't know if the Cover, if the camera's picking this up, but there is some color loss just by simply cleaning the cover with a cotton round. So that concerns me because if a basic rubbing of the cotton round on the cover removes some sort of color, I'm concerned what will happen with an aqueous solution or an aqueous bath in the book. So right now I do see some dirt coming off. So what we'll do is we will just continue the process that I'm doing and always go from the inside to the outside to prevent any type of ripping or bending of the book because we don't want that because if you do that you run risk of bending it and breaking it especially with these golden age books so let's do the back let's see how it goes and again the book is pretty clean so I'm going to do the whole cover and we're going to see how it works and if we get some dirt off. So right there, I see a little dirt that came off. But again, as I said, this book is in pretty good condition in relation to the dirt that may or may not be on it. Right here, I see a little issue because it is ripped and the back of the cover is actually flipped over the rip piece on the front cover. So let's fix that and let's see if we can get that underneath. So right there I did what I wanted to do. So with that being said, my concern is since I never worked on this publication before and based on me watching a lot of document conservation uploads. I really don't know how water is going to interact with this cover. So what I wanna do is I wanna put a little water in my dish right there. And what I notice what document conservation is do with really old documents is they will take a little water and they will rub the water 
on a section of the document that has ink in a print, an old archival document with ink on an artwork or something to that effect. And they will just make sure whether the ink that was used or the paint or the watercolor that was used is water soluble. And what that means is if the ink or the watercolor for a piece of art will lift when being submerged in water because we just want to check it. I don't want to put this actually in an, an aqueous bath and then all of a sudden the ink runs. So I'm doing that just as a safeguard to make sure. And as I see with my Q-tip, I don't know if it's picking up, there is actually no ink that is lifting. So I'm happy with that. So what I know by doing that is the actual cover can have a aqueous bath and it will not run the ink at least with the section that I worked on. Okay guys, I'm sorry I am back. Someone was at my door and I had to go and get it. So, right now what I want to do is I want to set this up where we can slowly introduce some moisture in this cover. So, what I want to do is I'm going to put the cover and its pieces to the side for now. And then I'm gonna get a piece of rame that I can lay the cover and the pieces on. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna let the cover introduce moisture into it slowly. So what I'll do is I will put my trusty grate and I am going to get now regular piece of Rimé paper or fabric and this is just Rimé that I am going to use to moisten the cover. So what we're going to do is we will put a piece laying there and I will put the front cover on the Rimé. I will put the back cover on the Rimé and then I will put the two pieces that we are attempting to save, which we will, on to the Rimé paper. And then just to be safe, we will put a piece of Rimé paper on top. Then I will remove it and then we will get our chamber. As I use in the past many times, and then we'll put one bottle of Poland Spring water in the chamber. And then I will slowly put the cover on top of one grate with the other grate. And I want to slowly introduce moisture as I indicated into this cover because it is extremely fragile. It's extremely brittle. So we're going to leave it at this for this upload. And then next upload, I'll take it out and we'll get it ready for the aqueous bath and hopefully it will turn out the way I want it to. I think it will, so stay tuned. Okay, guys, we are back. And we have the humidity chamber, which I kept the cover in for about 15 hours. But after about 15 hours and I didn't film it, I sprayed down the cover 
with my soap, which is palm olive and water mixture. And I'll do it again right now. Very gently, because we wanna be very careful with this book. So that I did probably once or twice. And now what I wanna do is I am going to give the cover an aqueous bath. And the aqueous bath that I'm going to use is the chloramine T compound. Now, I am going to use one tablespoon for one gallon of water. And this hopefully should whiten the white areas and keep the actual colored areas unaffected. So stay tuned, I'm gonna go upstairs and I'm gonna get my filtered water and we're gonna do the process. Okay guys, I'm back, I misspoke. What I wanna do is I wanna open this up. This is the first time that I'm using it. It's probably maybe a little silly that I'm using it on Mike's cover, but I think I'm in good shape here. So what I'm gonna do is I'll cut the top and we will get one tablespoon ready to mix with the actual water. And then we will introduce it into the actual tub with the cover. So this is a tablespoon. Let's get one tablespoon. I'm gonna do a little bit less and then I'm gonna put it into my container here. We'll close it up. And then what I wanna do is let's introduce some water to the actual vessel. Let's see how it actually dissolves because this is, like I said, the first time using it. And we'll find out right now. We'll mix it up. It's like we're making a meal, making some soup. And actually it dissolved pretty nicely. So stay tuned. Let me get approximately a gallon of water and we'll mix it and then we'll pour it in. Okay, guys, I am back. I do have my pitcher of water and we're gonna mix the chloramine tea in the gallon of water. And now what we wanna do is we wanna introduce it to the cover and we're gonna let the cover soak in the actual water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out I'm going to put the bottom grate on top and let's pour it in. There we go. And now we will put the actual Grate in slowly with the palm olive soap and the chloramine tea compound. And we're going to let this soak for about 20 minutes. So stay tuned and in about 20 minutes, I will remove it. And I just wanna discuss very quickly about what I'm doing here. There's a lot of guys on YouTube and on Instagram, which I love what they do. But in my opinion, I have a philosophy. When you introduce a chemical whatever it may be, hydrogen peroxide or bleach or soap, 
it's very important, in my opinion, based on the conservation standards that I developed, and I'm sure there's a lot of other people that develop the standards as well, and they agree with what I'm saying, you have to remove whatever you put in to the actual paper. Look at the paper fibers as a straw. When it gets old, the fibers become hollow. So whatever you interject or introduce into the paper, either hydrogen peroxide, bleach, soap, it will stay in the fibers or the straw of the actual book or paper. And it will develop over time and it will harm the book. So when I do anything to books, when I introduce chemicals, solvents, whatever it is, I do my best to actually rinse, rinse, rinse. Rinse whatever you put in with water. You have to flush it. You have, just like a radiator in the car when it gets rusty, you have to flush the radiator to remove all the rust particles or it's not gonna work. So if you're ever gonna work on books and you're gonna introduce a foreign substance with chemicals or soap or whatever you put into it, you have to take it out. So that's why I think full aqueous baths are the way to go if you're gonna do this sort of thing. And if you're gonna put a chemical on a cover or anything that you put on the cover and you're just gonna leave it, I think maybe it will harm the book in the long run more than if you actually took the cover off and rinsed it and cleaned it. Cause I'll put tons of water through this cover once I'm done with it to remove the soap, to remove the chemicals. So that's my two cents. Who am I? What do I know? Very little. It's just my opinion. So stay tuned. I'll see you in about 20 minutes. Okay, guys, we are back for the attack. And the cover has been soaking in my solution for 25 minutes. So what am I going to do? I'm going to have a sip of Rolling Rock right now. And I'm going to remove the grates with the cover inside. Now, one thing I've learned in doing this sort of thing is that you need to be very careful when you are actually touching wet covers and not just touching wet covers in general, it's touching the graphics because the graphics can smudge, it can lift, it can do all sorts of bad things. So I'll tell you right now, I'm looking at the water. I don't know if the camera is picking it up, but it is brown and it is dirty. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to go upstairs and I am going to go on or in my master bathroom where I have my tub and I am going to flush now cover your ears if children are watching this I'm going to flush the shit out of this cover I want to remove all chemicals and soap that I put into this cover and as I indicated, you have to get it out of there. You can't just put it in and let it dry because you're, you're hurting the cover. So stay tuned. I'm going to go upstairs right now. 
and I will actually show you how I'm gonna flush it. Okay, so stay tuned, we'll be there in a second. Okay guys, we are back for the attack. I just flushed the cover for five minutes or so, give or take. I don't put a timer on it. And now what I wanna do is I want to press the actual cover flat and we wanna dry it. Also what I wanna do is I want to do an acidity test so we can see what the deal is with this cover. Is it, is it acidic? Is there a possibility that we have to do deacidification, which I've been told by my friend, that's the way to say it, and I appreciate it, deacidification. I used to say deacidification, but I'm from New York, and believe me, the way we say things here, it's a little different from other areas but I appreciate proper pronunciation. So let's do a acidic, uh, acidic test and let's test the level of the pH. And that's not that, I'm, I'm getting wrong boxes. I'm into about two or three beers. So let me go into my little drawer here. I just recently organized my work layer here and I found it, universal pH strips. Now, whether this is 100% accurate, I don't know. But all I do know is that I've seen this done online in very famous museums. And this is how they test documents for the acidity levels or the pH levels. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently lift the Ramey paper. I hope the camera's picking this up and I'm going to put it down on the paper itself. And hopefully it will absorb the liquid in the paper and we will get a reading of the situation with the pH. Same test that I use on my pool. In my pool, a lot of times, the pool needs actual chemicals. So what do we got here? We got, it looks like a six. So we're in that sweet spot area, so we're pretty good. But right there, as you can see, some green came up. And that's, so that's about a seven. So I'm gonna look into that because I believe the six, seven area is the sweet spot, the neutral spot that we want. And that's what it looks like it actually is right there. So there is green. So that's a good indication. But what I wanna do now is I wanna go rinse that out. So stay tuned, I'm gonna go upstairs and we're going to rinse this and we'll be back to blot it. Okay guys, we are back. I just rinsed the pH color, which looks like it is a seven, which in my opinion, is pretty good. But I'm gonna check that because I'm not 100% sure. So what I wanna do is gently blot some of the water out. And what we're gonna do is we are going to press the cover and we're gonna let it dry very slowly. Now, someone asked me a question just recently 
where they said, do, did you ever try to accelerate drawing by putting it in or putting a cover or a page in the heat press? My answer is no, I did not. The reason why I do not is because I think the slow and steady drawing of the document, changing the blotters, removing the water is the way to go. Because if you speed up the process, it may damage the page by wrinkling or whatever. It's just not my thing. Slow and steady is my opinion. So, why are we Russian for? We're American. We're not Russian. I know I'm not from Russia. I'm from the good old USA. I don't attack other countries. We don't hear that much anymore about the Ukraine and things of that nature, I guess. That's not the popular thing in the news anymore. But you'll always have wars. You'll always have conflicts between countries. I was a political science major in college, and I also was a history uh, major as well. I don't know if I was a major or a minor, so I'm really into geopolitical situations, and I used to really study it. Not so much. Now, now I'm more into playing with comic books because I get enjoyment. And it doesn't matter what you think, how things are gonna change, they really don't. It's the same thing from generation to generation. So here you go. What I'm gonna do is I am going to nicely let this cover dry and we're gonna change the paper towels frequently. And this is the method that I use and really the only way that you'll be able to know if the actual treatment worked. Let's put that there so you don't have the glare. If It has to dry and once this dries, in the next upload, we'll check it out and we'll see if the actual chloramine T compound worked. And if it did lighten it a little bit, I may do it again because I'd rather do it a few times, changing the water, flushing it, doing it again, doing it again, then doing it all at once. I, I'm really trying to do my best job in this conservation for my good friend Mike and slow and steady is the way so stay tuned